For the sump cleaning, we're gonna start with removing our feed line coming out of the tank, and we are going to disconnect it and elevate the feed line. I usually attach it somewhere over here to the intake manifold, and that'll keep it elevated so that the oil inside of the cooler doesn't wanna siphon out and onto the ground, which would add air into this portion of the system and be grounds for repurging the oil system. The return line on the back of the bottom of the crankcase that goes to the back side of the tank itself um, can actually be disconnected and just drained down into a bucket. This line itself doesn't matter uh, if any air gets inside of there because any air just gets purged right out and does not cause any damage to the motor. With our feed line, our vent line, and our return line removed, we can now loosen the worm drive clamp holding the sump to the firewall. Now that you have your oil tank removed, before you disassemble it, you're gonna to wanna to do yourself a favor and either do a scribe mark or take a picture of how the fittings and the retaining clamp that holds the lid on correspond with each other. Sometimes the clamp will only go on a certain direction and you wanna make sure that things are being reinstalled as the way they were removed. Now that the clamp has been loosened, the tank lid can be removed. We're gonna to wanna to take off our retaining clamp and set it aside. And from there, the lid for the oil canister can be removed. Here you can clearly see the standpipe used for the feed line and the return line as it comes into the tank. As I mentioned before, when the oil comes in, it swirls around the outside of this screen and any contaminants, any heavy contaminants that are in there will actually drop down to the bottom of the sump under this little shelf and will kind of hang out down under here in the bottom of the tank away from where the feed pipe sucks the oil out of the tank. Now that those components are removed, we get to look inside of our oil tank and we get to see what sort of contamination is inside of there. In this particular case, there's signs of grayish black sludge, which is very clearly lead along with some carbon. Now, one of the reasons it's important to do this part of the process is the oil quantity inside of these engines is only about three liters. So if you're not routinely cleaning this tank, then as soon as you add those three liters of fresh oil and the engine heats up, all this contaminant just mixes right back in with your oil and will dirty it up pretty quickly. So we wanna get that stuff out of there. One benefit to a well-built stainless tank is that it actually cleans up very well. You don't usually need any sort of chemical cleaners. Just get inside there with a couple of paper towels uh, and wipe it out, being sure not to leave any paper towel debris or any lint. You're also gonna wipe, wanna wipe down the other components inside of the sump, like the tray that retains this, that supports the uh, screen. The screen itself, you want to kind of uh, just do an inspection and make sure that there's no um, obvious signs of the screen coming apart or any stuff stuck inside of there. It's not very common to get anything in there. And then you're also going to want to clean off the inside and outside portion of your lid and ensure that your O-ring that seals the lid is in good shape, not cracked, and is cleaned. The first step of the reinstallation is to take the screen support and make sure that the little feet are aiming down and it can be dropped into the bottom of the tank and doesn't need to be clocked in any particular direction. Next you're going to take your screen and drop that on, your o-ring, and your lid.
have our oil sump reinstalled. Now we want to ensure that the line coming out of the tank is coming around and going to our oil cooler and that the line going into the tank is coming from the bottom of the crankcase. You also want to make sure that the fittings are tight and that the lid is secured properly on the tank, along with your vent line, of course. You can now add your three liters of oil. Usually I like to add about two and a half liters and then run the engine and burp it before adding the final half of a liter just to ensure that the system isn't being overfilled. Our two and a half liters have been added to the oil tank. Now we can add the dipstick and the oil cap. And from this point on, the prop can now be rotated without ingesting any air into the system. One thing that is relatively unique about these Rotax oil filters is that they have a anti-drain valve installed in them. And that prevents the oil from draining out of the filter when the engine is shut down. The downside is that the filters can't be pre-filled like an automotive filter before the engine is ran. So what Rotax would like you to do is install the filter, install the oil, and then spin the propeller over about 50 rotations, and that will prime the oil filter before startup. It is important to periodically inspect the internal filter element of the oil filter to ensure that metal is not being produced inside of the engine. In order to do that, we will need our old oil filter, an oil filter cutter, and a sharp razor knife. For this part of the procedure, you're going to want to install the oil filter on the oil filter cutter, and then screw this down until the oil filter starts to make contact with the blade. From there, you're going to want to rotate the oil filter 360 degrees and then slowly tighten this clockwise about half a turn and alternating between 360 degrees and half a turn, 360 degrees and half a turn. And it'll slowly cut the lid off of this filter. With the filter cut open, you can see the anti-drain valve, which prevents the oil from leaking out of the filter. And then you can see the filter element itself can be easily removed and set aside for disassembly. Now what you want to do is locate the metal rib that runs down the center of the filter. And you're going to want to take your razor knife and cut here and here on either side of it. And then take the knife and run it around here and here all the way around. And that will allow the filter element to come out more or less intact. Once you get the filter cut, you basically can start peeling it out and just grab right here and slowly rotate the filter element and it should come out in one strip. If it comes out in two or three and breaks, it's not a big deal. Um, just lay them out and inspect them individually. Okay, once you have the filter element laid out, you're gonna wanna inspect it all the way down and make sure there's no signs of metal or suspicious contaminants. And if you need to, I'm not going to do it this time, but you can take your filter element, you can drop it in your clean container and add some mineral spirits or gasoline and agitate the filter element and any sort of metal or heavy particles will rinse off the filter and drop down into the bottom. Now that our oil change is complete, we're going to test run the motor. We're gonna keep an eye on oil pressure and make sure that we get pressure within about three to five seconds of the engine startup. After we get the engine up to about 122 uh, Fahrenheit and operating temperature, we're gonna shut it down. We're gonna re-burp the engine, check the oil level, and also check the oil filter and make sure that it is tight and hasn't loosened. Test run is complete, oil pressure looks good. Oil temperature is at 122F. Now we're going to go ahead and burp the engine. Okay, so we've ran the engine. Oil pressure is okay and oil temperature is 122F. We've now re-burped the motor. 
and we are going to be checking the oil level. So we have our nice clean stick. We're going to drop it down there. And one of the problems is, is fresh out of the oil change with these Rotax motors, the oil tends to be real clean. It can be hard to see. So one of the little tricks I like to do is get yourself a nice clean paper towel, lay the dipstick down on it, and then move the dipstick to the side. And it, you can actually see where the oil has bled off the stick and will give you a better indication of where the oil level is. So right now we're about a third of the way up the flat. And we're gonna check it one more time after adding the remainder of our third liter. And that got us about two thirds of the way up the flat, which is absolutely perfect. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope some of you found it helpful. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and feel free to share. And uh, if you guys have any video requests, let me know and stay tuned for more Rotax maintenance videos.